Good morning. How are you guys? Welcome to the morning show, Peach Tree Morning Show. It's Tuesday, February 18. We are so happy you're here with us. And today we have a lot of cool stuff to talk about. But first, before we go into our fir first question of the day, Scott wants to show oh. you something. Yeah, I really like the videos, guys. And we're really enjoying what you're sending in. So we've got... Uh, you mean all the questions? Yeah, sorry, all the video yeah. questions. Remember, send in your video questions to seedquestions at diamondcutterinstitute.com. And uh, we're getting them. We need them to be in vertical selfie format. Uh, with your face in the photo, if possible. This is Bridget. We love you, but we don't know where you're from. Uh, that's Bridget's window. Uh, and then we've got, uh, let's see, uh, June from Malaysia. We've got uh, Ladell from Canada. We've got Roman again from uh, Romania, we think. And that's a nice lady from Jakarta. Jakarta. And uh, those are just a few of the questions we've gotten in, and we're going to get into a few of the cool questions we got last week today. What do you say, boss? Yeah, well, today... Let me get that for you. Yeah, we want to talk about a very special question. Tell me when you're which, ready. It, it's amazing how, much thi how many things you can ask in 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so let, me, let us show you uh, an example, and we chose one of the... Uh, ideas that Moran Pober from Israel asked. Hi Moran, thank you for asking. So it's gonna play. Hey there, just wanted to ask you what do you think someone should do on a daily basis to increase revenues, to increase profits, to increase his lifestyle, and at the same time, what would you tell someone in terms of, of helping him find perhaps a better business model that have no limits compared to the business model that I feel that I have now that have some kind of a glass ceiling to the scale. So what do you think? Revenues, profits, unlimited scale and lifestyle. What would you do daily to get there? Thank Whoa! You. Oh, Moran, you it's only are like 20 great. questions. Yeah, glass you ceiling. That's, that's beautiful, glass ceiling. A lot of people are having that issue. What is a glass ceiling? I mean, depends Okay, on. so I want to just... Uh, What's the American so word mean? Be before we go into a discussion, I want to talk to... Moran asked a lot of questions about lifestyle, to increase your lifestyle, to increase your revenue, increase your profit. Business model. And then he talks about mid uh, business model and uh, how can I break the glass ceiling that I have uh, when I feel like I reached it in my business model and maybe find a business model that going to help me break through this glass ceiling. And this is what we want to talk about. But I think you got to define what's a glass ceiling because yeah. I remember I didn't know the expression like two months ago and it means in my business that I'm doing, there's only so much money I can make. Uh, you know, even the biggest person in my business doesn't make over that amount of money. We had the problem in our own business, right? Yeah, and you know, the first time I ever heard the term glass ceiling, it was more associated with like, I think with like equal rights amendment, in the United yeah. States, like uh, women uh, in, in uh, business seemed yeah. to get to a certain level and they couldn't seem to go any higher on the corporate ladder. And then now today we're seeing this glass ceiling term being used to talk about, I hit a plateau in my business. I hit a place that I, where I can't seem to uh, grow anymore. And so, it's 2020, February 18. Uh, DCI is 11 years old now. And, uh, you know, we grew from grassroots and we got to a point because we're just doing these, we, uh, up until now, offline, of, on, offline events, offline events. And we're traveling around the world all the time every year. Only so many cities uh, you can get to in two weeks, only so many hours you can push the human body. There's only so many. Airplane miles you could put on a human. Right. And, and, and only so many people you can fit into a hotel ballroom or a theater. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and we had to try to take a hard look not just at uh, the conventional ideas for how to be able to reach more people, but also why this, what seeds are there that are causing us to run into this glass ceiling. You know, okay. People started talking about a stadium. We'll put you in a stadium. Right. We'll have 10,000 people there. But even then, there's a limit. You know, right. how many stadiums can you go to in one year? Yeah, yeah and seven. I think there is the human hunger to always want more. Yeah, I, I reached like to it. a place, and I was I always want more. I'm dissatisfied where I am, and and so we always live under this glass ceiling. Yeah. Uh, so, but I think. Well, um, and, and you know, just to frame it out too. Look, we believe that the, the ideas at the base of the DCI system, which we took from the greatest thinking in the world. We believe that uh, that is something that 
turns everybody on and is an, a, a universal solution for everybody. So there are 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. Uh, right now we're getting to about 35,000 people in ballrooms every year. That's one 220,000th of the world's population. So we believe we have hit a glass ceiling. We want to go much higher. Okay. So we understand you, Moran. We also uh, reached a certain glass ceiling and yeah. we want to break through. Okay, so how can we do that? Gotcha. Yeah, I'm afraid. Wow. By the way, I have a suggestion from Moran and it's going to take me six full videos. Oh, Moran, uh, you're very lucky. And I, I decided your question should be what we call a DC online online for your life question and I think it needs six videos we recently did a, a series of six videos called uh, success detective and it's been very very popular around the world many thousands of people have been watching it so we're gonna start doing these six video sessions and your question was so cool and I had you know this many notes about answering it and I think uh, We'll take it as a separate series, and we'll do a separate series about your questions. There's so much content to Whoa. talk about, so hey. we can take hey, it to another it's level. It's the Peachtree Cafe! <laughs> hey, good you morning. Think you can help me out here. Yeah, yeah. I just I got started doing a business video right now. Oh, yeah? You're on the video. You're today. live on the internet. Hey, right how's it going, folks? <laughs> I hope everything goes good and you're successful. <laughs> okay, okay, come in, come in and talk to me. All right, well, we're going to continue while Gishy Michael talks to that gentleman outside. But uh, first of all, Moran, it's a, it's a great, great question. It's a great question. Uh, it, it goes to some of the core uh, issues that a lot of people are having in business today. And one of the big things, I think Arita will talk more about this, is uh, one, of the, one of the experiences that we have in DCI around the world is that anytime uh, we look at big picture big goals, we break those goals, we break the big goals down into components. You want to talk more about that? Okay, so if you are familiar with uh, one of the models that we have in DCI, it's what we call the four steps, right? The, oh, you guess my case is yeah, bad. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> that guy needs, a, he had a problem with his car. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I was just talking about the model of four steps of yeah. how to uh, create success in your life, in certain area in your life. So the first one is decide what you want. So this one we already know. I want to break the glass ceiling. I want to, I want to find a business model to break through my, uh, my glass ceiling. Second one is to find another person who have a similar problem and then help them once a week. This is the third one yeah. for one hour. And the, the fourth one is constantly having this mindset that I'm so happy that I'm helping somebody else that having similar issues to me. So uh, I would like to concentrate about who is the person that I should find. And I think if you, this is what we, what we call powerful object. There are certain people in our life that if we help them, they, uh, the result become faster and more powerful. You want to talk a little bit about this? The, yeah. The... yeah, I would say that. I think uh, in the first step is to decide what you want. So I, I understand the problem because you have a business and it could be any business. We have a cafe here and, and we have a limit of how much money we will ever make in this cafe. You Someday know? we hope uh, it's a cafe. Yeah. No, they, you know, we're building it out now, but, but people told us there's a limit. You can't make more than this much money in a cafe. And I say, no, you know, and, and then you got to talk about a very powerful object, someone very powerful object. And the, in the one way of presenting it, there's three choices, you know. One is you can help a friend of yours, right? Somebody you already know to break through their glass ceiling. Uh, if you want a more advanced practice, pick somebody you don't know, uh, a stranger. Because to help a stranger is more good seeds than to help a friend or a family member. Why is that? Uh, because it's not someone you would normally help, but who is still part of you. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you don't recognize it. Cool, cool. And that's a difficult thing to understand. So helping stranger is much more powerful than helping somebody you know. And then what's more powerful than that? Helping somebody that helped you in the past? No. Uh, helping someone you, who's your competitor. Competitor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So the reason Arit said helping somebody that's helped you in the past, so those are the classical powerful objects. Now Geshe Michael's riffing to something 
in, on a, in a business context, that's really hard and takes courage. Yeah, and the more radical uh, step you take, the more, the more you're going to smash that glass ceiling and things are going to happen. Wow. So the more you're willing to be brave and help somebody who is considered to be your competitor, yeah. you're actually planting a much more powerful seed. And more on, people will think you're crazy. And uh, that's, uh, I mean, we might call that uh, crazy wisdom. You might call it leadership. It's, it's, it takes courage, right? So I, uh, if, uh, I, I would also like to cover the classical powerful object that we have. So Geshe Michael talked about the non-classical one, yeah. but there is the classical one, which is the first one people are in great need. So in, in this case, people who are constantly suffering uh, from certain kinds of discrimination, right? Because this is a, a, a basic glass ceiling. Society put a ceiling on them. Yeah, wow. society put a glass ceiling on them. Yeah. So any person, it could be people who... Uh, 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 being in jail and they're yeah. released, right? Society yeah. discriminate them. It could yeah. be racial thing, right? Society also could be uh, religious. It could be religious. Could be male, female thing. Male, female. Could be age. Could be age. Wow. It's a big thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is people who are in great need, meaning mo they are constantly living under a certain kind of a glass ceiling all the time. Yeah. Uh, it's very powerful to help them. Second one is people who are facing a glass ceiling. Uh, but they helped you in the past. So when somebody helped us in the past, we, we have what we call like a seed debt toward them, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if we help them, if we repay them for the, them helping us, the seed that we are planting is much, much stronger. And then the third classical one is helping, do you remember? It's helping people who help a lot of other people. So if you have somebody you know who's helping a lot of other people, like like to help a doctor who is helping many other people. But in this, this case, we want to help somebody else that's helping a lot of people that lives under glass ceiling. Yeah, like uh, ah. we have friends in New York City who run a special program for the government that helps people who have a glass ceiling because of their race or they are new immigrants. Yes. And to help those people uh, who are helping many other people. It's like multiplying your, your seeds automatically. And, and what, I, what I wanted to say something to Moran, because his question caused me to have like two, two or three hours of thoughts about it. And I was just thinking, and this is a little bit deeper thing, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you could say that there exists out there somewhere uh, a higher ceiling for the business you're in, but people just didn't recognize it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like... It, there, there was a solution to breaking this glass ceiling in your business and it was out there but people couldn't find it and then you're looking to find it. Okay, that's one way to think about it. Okay, mm -hmm. Another way to think about it is to create a new glass ceiling for your, the business that you choose. Okay, so whatever business you're in, wow. uh, you, you create, you innovate a, a new glass ceiling for that business, and that, and somehow, that assumes that it's kind of out there, in the future. See, the first kind is out there somewhere else in the world. The second kind is out there somewhere else in the future, and you have to discover it. You see, and I would say both of those concepts are limiting. They are a glass ceiling in themselves. Oh. And. Okay. You need to break through the conceptual glass ceiling, which is that you have to understand that you set your own ceiling in the past. So if I understand you correctly, every time that I'm willing to break through a glass ceiling of a conceptual glass ceiling that mm -hmm. I have in my mind, I'm yeah. planting seeds also to create breakthrough in my yeah. business yeah. model. And don't think that glass ceiling is natural. It, it came from you in the first place. It's so, pretty cool. Can I just ask, yeah. Michael, I think people might be confused when you say cre when you're creating a glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. what, that you, can you explain that more, what it means? Well, what I'm saying, let's say you're in the, in the DCI business. Yeah. And, you know, there's only so many people can fit in a stadium. Right. And there's only so many flights that you and me and, and, you and, me and Ari can take in, in one year. Who created that ceiling? Who made that ceiling? Who okay. made that model? Uh, don't think it's natural. Don't think it exists somewhere in the, in the universe. You made it. Not by conventional yeah. actions, but by things you, we yeah. say, 
uh, imprints, uh, things you planted yeah, in the past. By attitudes. So if you change your attitude, if you, if you start doing these four steps and you realize that you can create a new ceiling for your business, for your kind of business that you are choosing to do, uh, you can remake the glass ceiling. The important thing is to understand that that glass ceiling is coming from you. Mm -hmm. Wow, and I think, uh, you know, we're, we're keeping these morning shows to 18 minutes or so, guys, mm -hmm. so we have to begin thinking about wrapping up for today. So, so maybe we like... We specific, give specific us, things Moran can do. Yes, specific things that Moran can do. Okay, so I would say one of them is do the four steps and consider very carefully who is the person that you choose to help. Yeah. What's the cause and effect though? What's he want? What's he trying to accomplish? He's helping someone else break out of their glass ceiling. Okay. Exactly. Guess Once a week. Once a week. For free. For free. For one hour. And don't forget, be happy about that. Yeah, but but what I want to say is, Moran, I'm gonna. We committed today to make you a special series. Wow. Of six videos, and uh, we'll make it available to everybody, because I I think your questions, the whole question you asked was amazing and I think I think it deserves like a small series of videos. Wow, well, Moran, you created yeah, a chain and, reaction. Another here. another practical thing, Moran, is Well what I'm saying is go watch the six videos. Go watch here. but before that, <laughs> there was one more very basic thing that uh, we talked about here is try to find when we have a kind of limited thinking in our mind. Because when we have a limited thinking in our mind, when we believe that the world is coming outside of us and it's not coming from our seeds it's actually create also a limited business model. Or you, wow. which means you don't realize that the glass ceiling you hit in the past was a creation of your own mind. From limiting, from like, a limited thinking. kind of thinking, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not understanding that there's infinite, infinite, infinite potential, so, basically. Uh, so every day, every day, try, let's try to break this limitation of thinking that the world is coming to me Right. toward me instead of coming from me. So basically just trying to consider that possibility, we say it's very powerful seeds, right? I'll tell you a funny thing though. They told me this cafe can only make so much money a month. It's tiny and it's in a bad location in a, <laughs> in a poor town, you know, and we want to open it for the elderly and for, for mentally disturbed people nearby. And, and you know, know what? that the person that came here is mentally not, not me. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, the, the, the little shows that we've been filming here have already broken that ceiling by about 50 times. Or something. Right, right, right. So, yeah, we see that we're reaching many thousands of people. But, but this is how you increase it. So, Moran, you have uh, started a chain reaction which is going to result in another series of videos. Thank you for an amazing videos. question. Thank you for the great question. And uh, now we're going to move on to talk about tomorrow's question for Wednesday. Could you take it away, boss? Okay, here we go. Lisa from Colombia, but living in Germany, and this is my question. Um, I would like to hear your opinion about karmic parenting. Um, children are the best catapult for us, for our spiritual development, because they really push our buttons very easy and very often. But um, to see what are the seeds that I planted to see my kids' own behavior is very difficult because the correlations are not very obvious. So what would be your advice on that and how to teach kids uh, about karmic seeds? Thank you. Whoa. Whoa, okay, kids. Karmic parenting, that's like a whole new yeah. company, basically. <laughs> but uh, Luisa, we've seen you at many events around the world, uh, especially in, in Germany. Yeah, mm -hmm. what do you want to say there? Yeah, and so, to, so tomorrow we're going to cover your question. How to talk, we're going to talk about seeds and kids. I like it, karmic parenting. Karmic, I think she, she was asking two questions, right? Like basically, how do I find the, the seeds I planted to see what I see in my kids? And also, how do I teach them? Yeah. That's a huge question that comes up. Okay. We'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll okay, guys. About, thank you. Love you guys. Thanks for having coffee with us this morning. Uh, have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.